Welcome to Divorce, Dating, and Empowered Living with your host, Rosalind Sedaka. Join Rosalind each week on a journey toward overcoming life's many challenges to achieve peace, empowerment, and positive transformation. It's time to relax, unwind, and transform your life with Rosalind Sedaka. Hello, everyone. This is Rosalind Sedaka. Welcome to the Going Solo Network and the show, Divorce, Dating, and Empowered Living. I'm your host, and I love talking to people about issues that will make a difference in their life. Today, my co-host, Amy Sherman, who's a licensed mental health counselor, is going to be interviewing me because we're going to be talking about divorce, and issues related to parenting before, during, and after divorce. So, Amy, it's so good to have you talking with me today and giving me an opportunity to share a topic that's so important to me. Thank you, Roz. I'm looking forward to the information you have to pass on. Let's get started right now. Roz, tell us some of the mistakes that parents make uh, when they're going through a divorce and, and dealing with their children. What are some of the things, the mistakes that they make that really impact their children? That's such an important question, and one of the most common mistakes we see is when parents fight anywhere around the children, even if it's on the phone or in another room, because children are hurt when they see both parents fighting. It tears them apart, and they have an allegiance to both mom and dad, and they're forced sometimes to take sides, They feel guilty for loving both parents when one parent is saying something about the other parent that they shouldn't be hearing. And it's very hurtful for children, hurtful in ways that remain with them for a lifetime. So studies show that fighting around the children is one of the most damaging things any parent can do, divorce or no divorce, but it's especially harmful in a divorce situation. Another serious mistake is when you badmouth your ex to your children. Uh, We all feel very justified in a situation, especially like a divorce, and sometimes it's very tempting to want to bring the kids on board and say, hey, your dad had an affair or, or he's a drug addict or some other issue going on. And it's very important to bite your tongue You could vent to your friends, vent to your coach, a therapist, but don't vent to your children because, again, they love both parents and it's hurtful for them when they experience that kind of language. You don't want to talk to them about material that's going to hurt them and burden them with shame or blame or or guilt or anything along those lines. So be very careful and bite your tongue when it comes to saying things that are going to create anxiety in your children or alienate them down the line. Tell us a little about your child-centered divorce program and how that helps in regards to what you're talking about now. Well, I went through my own divorce many years ago when my son was 11 years old, and he's now a grown young man, and I learned so much through the experience that I founded the Child-Centered Divorce Network, and at childcenteredivorce.com, you'll find a wealth of information about how to parent effectively so that the children aren't hurt in the process. What happens too often in divorce is that we get so upset with our partner that we lose sight of the impact on children. And inadvertently, not intentionally, but inadvertently, we say and do things that really hurt the kids. And kids can be scarred emotionally and psychologically for a long time and sometimes for a lifetime. So what we do is try to educate parents about the best ways to approach divorce before, during, and long after divorce so that they can protect their children and so that the children are impacted in as little way as possible through the divorce process and so that they grow up and have their childhood. We don't want to rob the children of their childhood. That's wonderful advice. You know, as a therapist, I see a lot of parents who are angry going through divorce and dealing with uh, the repercussions of anger in the household. And I know that sometimes it is very difficult for one parent to get past that anger 
you did suggest to talk to people and get and vent it in other ways. Is there anything else that a parent could do? Because people get so angry and they don't know what to do with that anger and they lash out. So yes. what kind of advice do you give your clients? Well, first you want to remember that you are a role model for your children. So how could you expect your children to grow up into mature, productive adults who handle the stresses and anxieties in life if you're demonstrating for them that you can't when you're going through your own divorce. There are going to be people in everyone's life that make us angry, and we need to find constructive ways of handling it. So number one, you don't want to demonstrate your anger to and around your children. And two, you need to find ways of venting and expressing it because anger does need to get out and released. We can't just suppress it. But you want to use techniques such as learning how to meditate, to calm yourself, to clear your mind and center yourself. Or you want to find an activity that can take some of your energy and put it into a more productive means so that you're doing something creative or artistic or helping other people. And there are ways of learning communication skills so you can express your anger if it's towards your ex. Then there are ways of saying, I'm really angry at you about, and then talking about it, but in a way in which you can have a dialogue and not put them on the defensive. One is to own the anger and say, I feel angry when I hear you say this, or it makes me very angry when I I heard you do that or say that. And what you're doing is owning and taking responsibility for what you're feeling and then expressing it. And there's a difference between just venting and, and screaming your anger versus talking about your anger and what you're feeling and what caused it and seeing if you could find a way of creating a win-win, a compromise, or a way of being able to move on despite the anger and find a medium, a different approach to your behavior. And this is something that a coach and a therapist can certainly help you with. And as a matter of fact, Amy and I created an anger management course online for people who have anger issues either regarding divorce or in other general life activities. And it's, it's a wonderful resource, and that can be found at anger ConflictPrograms.com, AngerConflictPrograms.com. You know, this is great advice, Roz. And, again, as a therapist, I see people being angry and speaking badly about their partners. And I'm just wondering, though, your program is so helpful and so important and so wonderful in terms of getting parents to understand how important it is to get their focus away from themselves while they're divorcing and focus a little more on their children. But what happens when one parent is into this and another parent isn't? Is there a way of dealing with that effectively so that the child still is not impacted by the anger and the and the process of a, a horrible divorce? That's a fabulous question, and it's true that in most cases, both parents will not be exactly on the same page regarding many things. There's going to be conflict and disagreements and different perspectives about things. But if one parent is more focused and child-centered, the influence will be better on the other parent. Otherwise, you're fueling each other, and things just accelerate. So, again, if you can behave in a way when you're role modeling for your children and and also role modeling for your former spouse the way to behave, you can de-escalate situations. You can de-escalate conflict. You can pick your battles. You can agree to disagree about certain things. You know, we don't have to micromanage every moment of our children's lives when they're with the other parent. There may be conflicts about how we discipline the kids, the the bedtimes, the school schedule, the food they eat. And it's so easy to get really upset and say, well, Dad's taking them to McDonald's all the time and they're eating junk food. Yes, that's true, but that may not be a life-altering situation, and maybe you could talk to Dad, and maybe you could let go if he's not going to cooperate and just know that the kids are going to get healthy food when they're with you. It's more important for the children to be around parents who are not constantly in conflict. 
And it's good to catch your partner doing something right, just as you try to do with your own children. If you compliment your partner and say, thanks for showing up on time because I was on a tight schedule, or I appreciate you're not taking Judy to McDonald's um, this weekend and, and giving her another alternative, th- those are ways of opening the door to a more cooperative co-parenting experience. And it's a learning experience. It's not going to be perfect. But we learn how to treat one another, and usually the other co-parent will respond more positively if we treat them more respectfully and kindly than if we just put each other on the defensive and up the ante so that the tension is greater and greater and greater. So one person can have a big impact on the tenure of the relationship And you're doing this not because of your ex. You're doing it because you love your children. Great advice. I'm going to take a break now. This is WGSNDB Going Solo Network, and we are on the Divorce Dating and Empowered Living Show. You're listening to WGSNDB Going Solo Network, Singles Talk Radio Channel, where we take a lighthearted and candid approach to discussions on the journey of relationship loss, divorce, parenting, being single, relationships building, dating, and yes, sex. Join our listeners and begin living your best life. Hello, everybody. This is Amy Sherman, and I'm with Rosalind Sedaka, who is talking about some of the mistakes parents make when they're going through a divorce. Roz, can you tell us what are the three most important things parents need to be mindful of when it comes to their children? You want to be attentive and watch your children because children of different ages respond differently to divorce, and different children will respond differently because of their personalities. So if you find your child is receding and disappearing from social interaction, quieter, not as not as attentive and interested in, in activities that used to be of interest to them, um, losing friends, their grades in school are, are falling, and they're acting in a more depressed kind of way and turning in, you, that's something you want to notice and catch early on. And do something about it, which may mean seeing, talking to a school guidance counselor, bringing them to a child psychologist, and having everyone around watching the child. Because some children turn in in reaction to divorce and get very depressed, and others will turn outward. If your child is suddenly more aggressive, if they're bullying in their behavior, if they're not getting along with the siblings when they used to get along, Again, if they're having problems in school and they're being called into the principal's office, these are all signs also of a child not adjusting well to their situation, but taking it out on others and and getting angry and and expressing and, and vocalizing what's going on. It's very important that we talk to our children and be as honest as we can with them in an age-appropriate way. Not honest about adult information. Again, not talking about dad had an affair, because that's not appropriate for, for children and even teens to know about. But talking to them about your feelings and letting them express sadness or anger of their own and letting them know that it's okay for them to feel what they're feeling and asking them questions about, choices that you can give them. Would you prefer this versus that? Does it make you happier to do this versus that? And acknowledge that they have a right to feel what they're feeling, even if you don't agree about it, and try to find a way to let them know that they count and they may not be able to change everything in their life situation, but to know that they're being heard and validated and that what they say matters is very important for a child, and that will help boost their self-esteem and give them the confidence to transcend the challenges they're going through, move on, and the most important thing is to remember we don't want to rob them of their childhood. Whatever we can do to keep consistent the way it had been before the divorce is really, really helpful for them. So find the joys and pleasures that they have in life and try to give them as much of that as possible. 
basically you're saying watch for changes in behavior. Whatever they did before, if things are different, their, their eating habits, their sleeping habits, their friends, and certainly behavior in school, watch out for those and be mindful of that so that you can do something about it and, and, and do something about it early on before it really becomes a problem. Another thing that yes. you know, we, we talked about, I, I just want to expand on it. If you notice that your child is getting angrier and angrier, you need to look at your own behavior because are you showing that kind of behavior in the household? Children are going to model what they see. And if you're not happy that your child is talking back to you and they're angry and they're defiant, look to see if you're not showing the, the child that same kind of anger and defiance in your own behavior in response to what they're doing or how you're, they're acting. So you really need to be a very a good model, and that's true whether you're going through a divorce or not. Children do what they see. And you mentioned that that parents need to be good model role models, and that I, I just want to emphasize that because I see it all the time with with clients in therapy, and we don't want to have to resort to therapy if we handle things better early on. So thank you. Very well that. said. I I totally agree with all of what you said. Is there a message that you can leave parents now so that they will feel that there's a light at the end of the tunnel during their divorce? There are questions you can ask yourself that are really important that can make a difference in how you approach every facet of your life, especially when you're dealing with the challenges of a divorce. And one of the first questions is, do I love my children more than I may hate or dislike my ex? Do I love my children more than I hate my ex? If you ask yourself that before you make any parenting decision, you're more likely to be on track with making the right one because parents who are so filled with anger towards their ex that they do everything in retaliation and to hurt the ex are inadvertently hurting their children. And it's hard to see it all the time when we're doing it. But if you ask yourself that question, you will come up with decisions based on love for your children, and that's always going to be a better outcome. Another important question to ask yourself is, when my children are grown adults, how are they going to react to the way I handle this divorce? And they're going to judge both mom and dad in a lot of ways, especially as they age through divorce. Regardless of what age your child is now, they're going to be older and older and older, and they're going to look at you and your behaviors in different light. And when they're grown adults, many children of divorce are very angry at their parents. Some of them just alienate their parents and, and cut the cords with them. Others never forgive their parents. When my son was a young adult, he came to me one day in his early 20s, and he said, you know, Ma, you and Dad really handled the divorce so well. Most of my friends are so angry at their parents when they've gotten a divorce, and I just think you and Dad did a great job. Thank you. And I let out such a sigh of relief. That was a turning point in my life, and that's when I knew I did something right and I had something to share with other people, and that was the catalyst for which I founded the Child Centered Divorce Network and wrote my book, How Do I Tell the Kids About the Divorce?, and moved ahead to become a divorce and parenting coach. So I want that outcome for everyone who's listening and everyone you know who's going through a divorce. I want your children to love and respect you during and through the process and long after the process. And there's one more question that I highly recommend you ask yourself, and that is when you're faced with a parenting decision after divorce, would I be making this same decision if we were still married? Would I be making this same decision if we were still married? If your answer is yes, that means your parenting decision is based on good parenting. If your answer is no and you're being influenced by somehow hurting your ex and you ordinarily would have responded differently, but your motive is more focused on pain and hurt and anger, then your children are going to be caught in that mix and they're going to suffer the consequences. So by asking questions of that nature to yourself, it really keeps you on the right track. And that's what we do with the Child Centered Divorce Network. We guide you and support you and keep you on the right track so that you're letting your children have the best childhood they could have every step of the way.
Wonderful information, Roz, and I hope everybody appreciates all that you have shared. Tell us how people can find you and any other information you want to share. Well, there's a wealth of information at childcentereddivorce.com, including a free ebook on post-divorce parenting. So if you just enter your email address right on the home page, that will automatically be sent to you immediately. I also have a lot of other free information, articles, tips, advice, expert interview series, and useful reference resources that every parent can use. And I do personal one-on-one coaching by phone or Skype. If you have issues that need to be addressed, we could address them early on and keep them from escalating into bigger problems. And I also am the co-host of this wonderful radio show, A Divorce, Dating, and Empowered Living, so you could listen regularly to this show because I provide information about divorce success strategies on a regular basis as well. And um, thank you, Roz. And I'm Amy Sherman. I am a licensed mental health counselor. I could be reached at your Baby Boomers Network which is a website dealing with the challenges that uh, baby boomers are going through, many of whom are are going through divorce, and I have a lot of information about that. And, of course, the challenges that boomers experience with their divorce are a lot different than the challenges that people who have children are going through, but yet it's still difficult, and uh, there's not as much material about it, actually. But I do have material on it on my website, for anyone who may be experiencing that. I want to thank you, Roz, for sharing all your expertise. It was just wonderful. And, again, this is WGSNDB, Going Solo Network, the Divorce, Dating, and Empowered Living Show, and we will see you next time. Bye-bye now. Bye-bye now.